Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 in Freshman English. We now turn in our My Perspectives consumable volume to unit number three. I'm with you on page 250 and following. Now unit three, if unit two is about survival, unit three is about a different type of survival. We might say political survival. This is the literature of civil rights. Uh, and then I'm just reading on page 250, during the civil rights movement, writings and speeches inspired sweeping social change, what gave those words the power to change a nation? This is, of course, a provocative question. We're going to really enjoy some of the texts that we get to study here. Now, on 252 and 253, I want you to work through those unit goals and that academic vocabulary real quickly. And then I want you to finally be on page 254 with our unit 3 introductory launch text. Now, first of all, on page 254, it's a compelling image, isn't it? Right? On 254, I want you to, first of all, circle that the launch text is, it text is informational model or informative model, okay? This like, no, I'm just reading now. This selection is an example of an informative text. Sometimes we'll refer to this as expository. Write that down. A type of writing in which the author examines concepts through the careful selection, organization, and analysis of information. This is the type of writing that you're going to perform in your performance-based assessment here at the end of the unit. Now, as you read, you're challenged to think about the, how the writer describes events. Mark the text to help you answer this question. Question, how does the writer help the reader understand the importance of these events? And the topic here now is 1963, the year that changed everything. And then notice that... We have a little caption underneath this image. During the Children's Crusade of May 1963, police turned fire hoses on young civil rights protesters, including this girl who was knocked to the ground by the force of the water. Let's read now the seven paragraphs and annotate as we go. In 1865, obviously a date you want to circle it when you see an important date, the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution ended slavery. So 13th Amendment in its constitution, 1865. Nearly a century later, that is to say 1965, right? African Americans continued to struggle for equality under the law. A number of major events in this dramatic battle took place in 1963. So there's your thesis, underline it and focus on it. This is your thesis. We're gonna talk about a number of major events that took place in 1963 that would lead to important changes in the law regarding civil rights. Paragraph 2. In April of that year, circle the word April obviously, from behind the bars of a jail cell in Birmingham, Alabama, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a message that would inspire countless others. King had been arrested for breaking a law banning public protest. His message, the famous letter from a Birmingham jail, defends nonviolent resistance. I would circle that idea, not that, that term, nonviolent resistance, to uh, defends nonviolent resistance, uh, resistance to injustice. Injustice, he will say, anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, King would write. He added, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Compelling ideas. We're going to spend quite a bit of time now with the letter from Birmingham Jail, and so make a note. Paragraph 3. In early May, notice we're working through the year chronologically, yes. The young people of Birmingham took King's message to heart. Disobeying a court order, more than a thousand African-American students marched from the 16th Street Baptist Church. The next day, the students marched through Kelly Ingram Park. They were met by an angry white mob, as well as police, who blasted them with water from fire hoses and terrified them with dogs. The teenagers were jailed in temporary cells at the country fairgrounds. On the seventh day of the Children's Crusade, city officials agreed to negotiate with the African American community. A few days later, the two sides reached an agreement to end local segregation. So peaceful protest by walking is going to be mentioned now in paragraph three as called a Children's Crusade. Now, of course, Children's Crusade, you can Google this, it has a very ancient, very old idea because we have as one of our famous crusades in Europe, a children's crusade. Paragraph 4. News of the children's crusade spread in the media, helping to transform the way Americans saw the civil rights movement. The New York Times ran more stories about civil rights in the two weeks after 
the children's crusade that it had in the previous two years combined. Scenes of children under attack were filmed and broadcast all over the world, setting off a global outcry. Polls showed that Americans across the land believed racial justice was the nation's biggest problem. By the way, you can obviously Google on, uh, you know, on YouTube and you can see some of these images which are compelling. Paragraph 5. The struggle for civil rights continued to be marked by violence. Now we're to May 28th, so notice we go from April to early May, now to May 28th, the end of May, 1963. Four African-American college students in Jackson, Mississippi were assaulted for sitting at a segregated lunch counter. Two weeks later, on June the 12th, an assassin killed civil rights activist Medgar Evers outside of his home in Jackson. Tragic. So notice, we've moved from Martin Luther King Jr. being arrested to by June of that same year, the great Medgar Evers being killed. Paragraph 6. That summer, so notice we've moved now from April to summer, that summer brought a landmark event in civil rights history. This was the March for Jobs and Freedom that took place in Washington, D.C. on August 28th. Under the, I hope, I hope you circle that date, uh, um, August 28th. Under the shadow of the Lincoln Memorial, Dr. King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech to a crowd of 200,000 people from all walks of life. So there it is, August the 28th, 1963. This is again the year that changed everything. We're going to have the famous I Have a Dream speech, which is a speech that we will be studying together. Okay. The peace and hope of that event did not last long. On September 15th, so notice we've started in April, we're now to September. September 15th, a bomb exploded inside Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church. The attack killed four little African-American girls and injured 22 other people. So notice how the violence is here most tragically to the, ch to the four children, right? It's, just, it's, it's brutal. Finally, paragraph 7 in the conclusion of our introductory uh, launch text. The struggle continued throughout 1963. The Southern Regional Council has records of protests that took place in more than 100 southern towns. Approximately 20,000 demonstrators were arrested with words and actions. They delivered a demand for justice that could not be ignored. Now, we want to uh, concentrate really quickly on this as an informative model. Notice, the author of this text doesn't tell us what he or she thinks about the events. Like, uh, can you believe they turned water on these children? How, how bad is it? Notice the tone, very objective, very to the point. This is what happened that year of 1963. But it had an effect by the end of this informative piece. We're aware that you, could, you couldn't look away anymore. So that by the end of 1963, so much had changed about what was accepted. And obviously the civil rights movement would then begin its next phase, which was so, cru so cru crucial for us. On page 256, I want you to just quickly summarize what you just read. And on 257, the prompt here for the quick write is explain how words have the power to provoke, calm, or inspire. Let's go ahead now and turn to the great Martin Luther King Jr. We'll be looking at his I Have a Dream speech as well as his letter from a Birmingham jail. We'll also comment on the, in a, in a media video, the remarks on the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. by Robert F. Kennedy. Thank you. I hope that you'll enjoy our study very much.